everyone. My name is Reggie Russell. I am the current district commander for the great state of California, 16. It is, thank you. It is my esteemed honor of being tonight's master of ceremony and to host our national junior vice commander in chief, Dwayne Saramento and all of you wonderful veterans that are here tonight to celebrate our 103rd Veterans Day. Before we get started, I want to make quick, first quick uh, announcements to do some acknowledgements here. As stated before, we have Dwayne Saramento. He's our National Junior Vice Commander-in-Chief for Veterans of Foreign Wars. Dwayne is Tim Bryant, the Department of California Junior Vice Commander. <laughs> Seated just in front of me is Roger Mayer. He's our Department Adjutant and Quartermaster for the State of California. <laughs> Joining us here at the head table is a VFW Life member and City of Vallejo's current mayor. Robert McConnell. And the Vice Mayor, Rosanna Lieber. We also have with us past Department California Commander, John Lowe. Our past District 16 Commander, Cecil Jennings. <laughs> Past District Commander Pete Cagliano. <laughs> Past District 16 Commander Bill Reed and also the past 2311 Post Commander. Our current commander couldn't be here because of other obligations. Uh, family took precedence over this one for uh, reasons that he couldn't be here. But we do have with her, with us, our senior vice commander for Post 1123, Hank Howard. Also, I'd like to recognize our current department president, Kathy Smith. Chair of Navarro. Our current District 16 Auxiliary President, Samantha Vance. Also, our Post 1123 Auxiliary President, Mary Russell. Also, I want to mention that we have with us a great honor our former mayor, Bob Sinfang. that we have with us also John Fox, our city of the Laos food board. And I actually have this in the middle of my program, but I do, I'll be remiss in mentioning all you wonderful veterans that are here with us today. You make this day possible, and without your efforts, everything else goes in vain. So, So at this time we're going to have the California, the California State University Maritime Academy Color Guard please perform your duties. Everyone please rise. Ready, set, 
We'll now have the singing of our national anthem by our Voice of Democracy ruling winner, Maximilian Burgess. Blessings on all gathered here. In John 15, 13, 
it is written that no man has greater love for his fellow man than this, that a man, a man lay down his life for his friends. That could be said of all of us veterans. Blessed are all the veterans that came home. And we are giving them thanks tonight. It is all together and fitting to combine Veterans Day with Thanksgiving. We owe a great debt of thanks to all veterans. Bless all gathered here. And join with me. Bless us, O Lord, in these kind gifts from your bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Governor? Sorry. You may all be seated, please. Uh, for real this time. <laughs> I know how those things feel when you're up and down, up and down. This is not a Catholic reserve, so uh, everyone's going to sit down at this time. Okay, at this time I'd like to have our current Post 1123 Senior Vice Commander Hank Howard do our welcoming comments. Thank you, Commander. It gives me pleasure to thank everybody here who's supporting this dinner tonight and who's taken part in the meal. There's a lot of work went behind the scenes. I need to say a couple of people's names that who are in our post 1123 who have done an admirable job to help to put this dinner on the forefront for us and make this place look like a beautiful hall tonight as it is. I'd like to uh, I recognize Dennis Clement Clemente, he's the uh, acting building manager for the or building manager for the property. I'd like to um, recognize Bob Fernell for our uh, participation in the dinner tonight. We also had several other of the members put these tablecloths on the silverware, put the dinner together. We have a caterer. You're going to be surprised about the dinner if you haven't had a steak dinner with us before. And it's going to be a great meal, and I invite all of you to have a nice time. I'm going to cut this short because I think the cooks are waving us off, and I know you guys want to eat at 6 o'clock. So I thank everybody for coming again. And I hope to see all of you again, and any of you the veterans today. It isn't only on November 11th, Veterans Day in the United States, in this post here is every day. I'd also uh, like to announce, uh, please, uh, Leon Garcia, the mayor of American Canyon, is with us tonight. Thank you, Mayor. One thing about our post that I think that everybody should know is that we just completed a Buddy Poppy drive last weekend. Out of the three locations, over the two days, we took in $3,600 for the beans for funds inside of the real company. And it was a lot of hard work, and we had a lot of wonderful donations in the, uh, in the drive. You also will notice that um, Maximilian uh, is a Boy Scout that we support, the Boy Scout troop for there's, uh, using the building and are here uh, quite often. There's seven organizations that are involved in this building. Um, lastly, um, we have uh, saw, some of you might have seen today outside the uh, Build Back Better thing of, uh, what do they call the thing with the food outside? Coming together, rebuilding together. It's close to the other Biden's thing, but anyway, they have uh, put food out at two locations today on Mare Island and over here at the monument back at City Hall. And there was several amounts of help that went into putting that off. 
And so a lot of our members from 1123 support that operation and make it operational. I'd like, the last thing I'll say is I'd like to op op recognize two of our senior members of our folks. I'd like to remember uh, Ray Wilson, Navy veteran, Korea and Vietnam. Maybe got him, and uh, he's kind of squatted down in the middle there, but we got him under control. The other guy I like to recognize is Joe Mickelson. He's uh, one of the uh, long-standing uh, members of the VFW in some, what, 50 years, 60 years? 60 years in the VFW, so it's a long time as a VFW member. What? That's it. Okay. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, stand by and we'll start, the, I guess, the salads and uh, the dinners, okay? I just got the cutoff signal from the building manager. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hank. And as stated before, we're ready to start dinner, so please enjoy. Uh, we have rolls sitting at the table, as well as salads. And we'll make announcements for uh, the survey. VFW Pride is showcased in the hard work and support that we make to provide our communities with long-standing citizenship, which is second to none. When that expectation is met, and exceeded, we like to recognize those who made that possible. So at this time, I'd like to bring up to the podium Post 2333, Commander Daryl Prill of Fairfield Sassoon. Daryl Prill, he's out, that's just fantastic. He's being recognized and he's outside. <laughs> well, just to tell you, our own state program exists to recognize exceptional leadership and teamwork to acknowledge the accomplishments and its membership growth and VFW core programs, all of which have been demonstrated by post 2333 under the leadership of Commander Prill. And I am proud to award him with the prestigious cover displaying his all-American state status, which I can't do because he's outside. So, <laughs> let's have a hand for Darren Prill. present you with your cover, All-State Team Post Commander 2021. Woo! Congratulations. <laughs> now I'd like to recognize past District Commander Cecil Dennings of the Dixon Post 8151. As an all-state district commander, you must demonstrate outstanding positive leadership qualities. You must share communications from the department to your post and understand the purpose of how to encourage your post to participate in events and programs to further the goal of the VFW. It is my esteemed honor to award you your cover of All-State Team District Commander 2021. Now, this one's going to be just a slight bit lengthy, but it's worth it, trust me. I'd like to bring up to our podium, current district, current district 16, 
a current post-1123 quartermaster, Robert Burnell. For more than yeah, all right, he's right there. <laughs> For more than 121 years, the VFW Post have been the pillars and the support in their communities. While there are several veteran organizations that aid their communities, that aid their communities, VFW stands head and shoulders above them all as we continuously provide our communities with recognizable veteran presence. From coordinating welcome home celebrations and community events, to organizing clothing and food drives within the community, VFW prides itself on doing the hard work that it takes to support all of those who live within our areas. While this certainly enhanced the post and makes the membership look pedestal ready, none of it would be possible if we didn't have the person working behind the scenes, and that's our quartermaster. A quartermaster at any level ensures that the VFW is able to maintain its ability to provide its services to the community, all the while operate as a functional entity financially. While the general public may not know the difference between the covers that we wear, we all know what is done to attain such an honor and a title. And with that, I would like to present Robert Farnell, our all-state team district quartermaster. Congratulations, gentlemen, on your all-state titles. You know, World War I, also known as the Great War, was also tapped as the war to end all wars. It happened between July 28, 1914, to November 11, 1918. To mark its one-year anniversary, the war was celebrated on November 11, 1919, on the 11th day of the 11th hour, which was, as I stated before, the anniversary day of the First World War. Well, it wouldn't be called the First World War if it was a war to end all wars, so we had a World War II. And we had a Korean War to follow that one. So if I can have the, Viet the um, World War II and Korea veterans Please raise your hand. We'll put your hand down. Come on, this is your time. Korean War veterans, World War II veterans, raise your hand. Let me tell you something that you already know. These men may seem <coughs> like they're ordinary people, but they wear capes. The capes are not shown, but they are definitely there because they are superheroes. They are the pillars of our community and the, the giants that stand within any veteran organization that lift those, including myself, up to a higher level. They provide a standard for us to follow, and they provide the direction in which your post should, should, post should be working towards. Your amazing dedication ushered in a flood of future patriots and gave way to a new fighting spirit within our nation that still glows as a beacon of freedom today. Last thing I want to talk about is something that you probably heard a great deal of today. How many of you, and just by a show of hands, how many of you have been told thank you for your service? Come on, don't be shy. I know you have. You've probably been told that right here in this building. Now, of those people that raise their hand, I guarantee you, when you talk to them, a lot of them feel a little humbled by it. Some of them even don't want you to thank them for their service. But I'm going to tell you, it's a great sacrifice. Great sacrifice. And that's what I want to talk about right now, is sacrifice. It's not natural to put one's interests above your own. Anyone who has young children can attest to this. Children love the word mine. 
especially when they're talking about toys, right? No one has to teach a child, no one has to teach a child possession about toys. It's in their nature. On the contrary, self-sacrifice is not. That is something that must, that is something that must be cultivated within them. Self-sacrifice and selflessness acts of human decency, that must be practiced on a, on a daily basis in order to create the narrative of your life. It becomes less about your schedules, your preferences, your vision, and it becomes more about the needs of others. When you raised your hand all those years ago to become a member of the greatest military in the world, it took great sacrifice. You step forward, excuse me, you step forward from a line of people who were not ready to make that self-sacrifice. The decision you made makes for a better community, it makes for a better state, it makes for a better country, and yes, it definitely makes for a better world. That's priceless, my friends. Your transformation from being that child who always shouted the word mine, has led to the rewriting of your internal narrative and your ability to change the world. So I'm challenging you, I am challenging you, to become aware of your internal narrative. Stop feeling guilt or unworthiness when someone acknowledges your self-sacrifice. To protect them from harm's way, simply accept the praise, because you earned it. Okay, so now, moving right on, I would like to acknowledge uh, Nestor Alita. Nestor, are you, in, are you somewhere very about here? You know, this is probably the one time you called him yesterday he's not around. It's not in the program. It's not in your program, but I want you to know that this dinner, the Mayor Island celebration that took place earlier today, is directly through the hard work and dedication of Comrade Nestor Lee. Through this hard work and dedication, we are so close of having a national cemetery right here in Blair. I just want to publicly make that announcement and make sure that you were given the praise that you would so richly deserve. Thank you, sir, and I salute you. Okay, so at this point, I would like to have the mayor come up and say a few words. Um, I don't know, he had an earlier meeting, so he may not. Checking and see if he's available. I know, right? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I was saying earlier about how membership slowly dies off. The mayor is in the meeting, so that so that veteran organization could have a quorum, so they can make decisions for that veteran organization. No greater sacrifice than self sacrifice. Thank you. So at this time, I would like to introduce our vice mayor, Roseanne Lira. Thank you, Lady. I'm uh, Rosanna Andrea, we have a speaker on behalf of the city of Vallejo. I would like to call Councilmember Meister and Councilmember Ayola to join me at the podium because we will present this resolution for proclamation recognizing Duane Sarmiento as a So I will read this proclamation. We will take turns in reading it because it's pretty long. As you know, my, I'm losing my voice since this morning I've been on the microphone, so you may want to hear a different voice today, this evening. 
So I will read the first two paragraphs and council member Mr. Ben Ariola will follow suit. Okay, get your glasses. Thank you. Proclamation recognizing Duane Sarmiento. Whereas Duane Sarmiento was elected junior vice commander in chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States on August 3rd, 2021, at the 122nd VFW National Convention in Kansas City, Missouri, and whereas Sarmiento stated, I am extremely humbled by the moment as I have spent most of my life in service to my country in the U.S. Navy as a police officer and through the veterans of foreign wars and the gravity of being the first Filipino-American elected to the high office of Junior Vice Commander-in-Chief of the VFW reinforces my resolve to represent and serve all VFW members regardless of race or ethnicity, unquote. And whereas Sarmiento was born and raised in New Jersey and his grandfather was born in Batangas City, Philippines, while his wife Ellen was born and raised in Pardo, Cebu City, Philippines, speaks Tagalog and Visaya, and both reside in Gibstown, New Jersey, USA, and 20% or 25,000 of the city of Valencia's population is of Filipino descent. And, and whereas Sarmiento served in the United States Navy from 1988 to 1997, and the United States Naval Reserve from 2002 to 2006, Navy. earning his VFW eligibility by serving in Operations Desert Storm and Shield, and he received the Navy Achievement Medal, Navy Combat Action Ribbon, Navy Good Conduct Medal, and the Southwest Asia Service Medal with three campaign stars, the Saudi Arabian Medal for the Liberation of Kuwait, Kuwait Medal for Liberation of Kuwait, and numerous other medals and ribbons. And in 2003, he earned the title of Naval Reserve Center Sailor of the Year at Fort Dix. And... Whereas... Sarmiento retired as a police officer with the Greenwich Township Police Department and Gloucester County Sheriff's Department in New Jersey. And he's also the Director of Veterans Affairs in Gloucester County, New Jersey, retiring after 10 years of service. Whereas, Sarmiento joined the VFW in 1990 at Post 5579 in Gibbstown, New Jersey, where he maintains his gold legacy light membership and he has served in elected and appointed positions at the post, district, and department levels, culminating with his election as the VFW Department of New Jersey Commando from 2018 to 2019, and on the national level, he has served on the National Security and Foreign Affairs Committee, General Resolutions Committee, and as Special Aide de Camp, and as Inspector General from 2019 to 2020. Now, now, therefore be it resolved that Robert McConnell, Mayor, and the Vallejo City Council do hereby recognize Duane Sarmiento, and we encourage everyone to acknowledge his historical election as the VFW Junior Vice Commander-in-Chief and his tremendous history of service to our veterans and our great nation by attending the program and dinner on Thursday, November 11, 2021, 4.30 p.m. at the Vallejo Veterans Memorial Building located at 420 Admiral Callahan Lane, dated November 11, 2021, signed by Robert M. H. McConnell, Mayor of the City of Vallejo, attested by Vice Mayor Rosanna Verder Liga, Council Member Christina Ariola, Council Member Hakeem Brown, Council Member Pippin Du, Council Member Mina Loera Diaz, and Council Member Katie Meester. Congratulations, Duane.
Thank you so much. And again, on behalf of the city of Vallejo and uh, Mayor Pocahontas, who is Lucy doing a Zoom meeting on behalf of our city, we are very proud to welcome um, and congratulate Dwayne Sarmiento. Sit down here. Uh, this is his first visit to California. And we are so very fortunate that he visited Vallejo. And you're going to be back. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dwayne. It's, it's hard to know where that comes from. If it comes from Nestor only or his wife. You see how she casually invited him to come back? <laughs> how about that? Okay, so from Senator Bill Dodd's office, Tom Bartini, the district director. He has to get podium ready, see the jacket and all that. Thank you. I'm not sure that I could do justice to all those awards, medals, distinguished activities, etc. that we just heard and recognized, but from what I heard, this is a great man right here, and we're really, uh, we're really blessed to have you here. So, um, I'm here tonight representing Senator Bill Dodd and Assembly Member <clears throat> Tim Grayson, and we have a certificate of recognition from the state legislature, and if you don't mind, I'll read it quickly. Um, it says, California State Legislature Certificate of Recognition to Dwayne Sarmiento, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Junior Vice Commander in Chief. In appreciation of your exceptional military service under extraordinary conditions for the people of the United States of America, your commitment and passion to improve the quality of life of our veterans deserves the highest commendations from the people of the state of California. November 11, 2020. 21, signed uh, Senator Bill Dodd and Timothy S. Grayson. Congratulations. One is a challenge coin from the California Veterans Deputy Secretary Women's Veterans Division, Virginia Wimmer. And so I have to give this to you. And one uh, certificate, last, last but not the least, a certificate of special congressional recognition presented to Dwayne Sarmiento for a self for a life selfless service and now being elected to the Veterans of Foreign Wars Junior Vice Commander November 11, 2021 from Mike Thompson, Congressman, 5th District, Member of Congress. invite went out, they went out to uh, the commander-in-chief of the other day, just out of the state. And he said, you know, <laughs> Wayne with his chair, said, you know, we really should send someone out there. He goes, yeah, we really should. <laughs> <laughs> now he's going to be jealous because he's going to come back a completed, decorated soldier. Yeah. <laughs> well. At this time, I'd like to bring up our department, Junior Vice Commander, Tim Bryant.
Good evening. I'm Tim Bryant. I'm out of a district of five in Southern California, Lancaster, about a five and a half hour drive, right next to uh, Edwards Air Force Base. First of all, this is an amazing group that's here today. We have people not only from the VFW, our auxiliary, but also the local community. The California Mar Maritime out there is our honor guard, the Boy Scouts out here. So this is what a district looks like when you have a community involvement, a building involvement, all of this I just wanted to share a few things before I introduce our, our honored guest here, is that uh, there's folks who have shaped my career uh, being a part of the BFW. Uh, uh, I'd like to recognize them now. I had Pete Caggioni. Thank you for the past Uh, Air Force members here, Bill Reed, you're here? Yeah. All right, Air Force, Air Force members. Uh, and Rich, uh, if they're uh, just good thoughts for the way we talk and communicate with each other. Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize, even though she's not here, my wife, the uh, district past district five president and current district four junior vice president. Uh, we've been married 40 years, and trust me, she shaped me a whole lot. <laughs> I'd recognize he's probably one of the hardest working, uh, working individuals in the Department of California. Uh, four years he's been there in our department, working 14, 12 hour days, no joke. Uh, he has phone calls that come from everybody asking questions about how do I do this, what's the rule on this, how do you handle this? And I've never heard him come across to anybody uh, other than me. He has never done that. So I'd just like to give a special recognition and shout out to our department adjutant and quartermaster, Roger Mike. Please. Yeah. Yeah. He's, a, he's a true friend and a true comrade. Uh, so you've already heard the accolades about our national junior vice commander in chief, uh, Dwayne Sarmiento. But I'd like to share some of the things that some of you may not know. I was on, uh, offered the opportunity to attend the junior vice uh, commander's conference for all the departments uh, throughout the uh, our, our national organization. I think we have 53 uh, junior vice commander in chiefs. And there was a time for us to get mentored, learn about who Duane is, what we were going to do. And, and so many times when we go to these uh, events, we hear a lot from the individual leader, what I want to do, what, what he wants to do, what me wants to do. But Duane came across as the team of we, how we're going to move forward how we're gonna work in lockstep with one another. We're both in the class of 2023-24. That's gonna come in as the department commander for the state of California, as well as for our national commander in chief. If we can work together as one, walk together as one, think together as one, get those things done, work with our auxiliary as one, you know, because they are part of the team. And if we can stick together and work that out, there is no barrier that this organization can crack through and, and, and defeat. We know what the challenges are, membership's one of them, but also helping us work better in our communities, work better with our other service organizations. And it was just a pleasure to hear when Dwayne and I have talked uh, at that conference, and then at the Western Conference, and then our, uh, we have a, 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 the, the breakfast meetings that we have, is that he's not a team of me, he is a team of me. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you our National Junior Vice Commander-in-Chief, Dwayne Sarmiento. State post commanders and uh, the all state district commander and post quartermasters. Any Marines in the room? 
<laughs> happy birthday, 246th birthday. I know it was yesterday, but happy birthday to you. Now I'd be remiss if I didn't say, Marami kung salama po sa inyong Imba Tishon. Did I say that correctly? Imba Tishon. You know, it's funny, I, I, I ran that by my wife. And she's like, oh, God, they stretch so many things out. I, you know, she put my wife's beside. And she said, you better tell them I gotta read this because my Visayan's worse than my Tagalog. <laughs> so for any Visayan's in the, here, is there any Visayan's here? I know, but there's, there's, the hang salamat sa pi imitor nino na po. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me here today. And what that translates into. I would have never imagined as a kid growing up in New Jersey did I be in Vallejo, California? <laughs> as, as it was stated earlier, it's my first trip out there. I, you, this community has treated me as one of their own. Yes. I can honestly say, Vallejo, I, I, I've only been here three days. And I'm like, this place is great. You know, I feel like I belong here. Yes. So thank you so much for that. As the veterans of foreign wars, junior vice commander in chief, I am the voice that was proudly elected. That's all I am is the voice. Because the 1.5 million members of the VFW and Auxiliary is who I represent. So as I stand and I talk about the VFW, and I know there's other uh, veterans groups in here, and I thank you for what you do. We all are on the same mission, if you will. We go about it a couple different ways, but we're all on the same mission. The VFW is an organization that their tagline is, no one does more for veterans. That's not just a tagline. That's what we do. That is what this organization does, whether we're in Vallejo, California, Dallas, Texas, Gibbstown, New Jersey, or Bismarck, North Dakota. It is the same throughout. I thank you for everything you do for the veterans of foreign wars. Part of our commitment is to community. And this showing tonight of the community of the city of Vallejo shows me, a total outsider, that this post understands that because their community is inside here today being part of this celebration on Veterans Day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Service has been a way of life for me. And I take that from my growing up, with my middle class values, my heritage. You know, I, you know growing up, I, I'm, I'm an Italian Filipino kid. Right on. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking, I was just talking to the mayor, but people go, you're Filipino? I said, look, I got no hair on my arms, I don't shave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people ask me all the time, you shave your arms? I said, that's the Filipino in me. <laughs> I may have changed hats along the way of my service. I started out, you know, in the United States Navy, I wore, for the Navy, I wore a white hat, the Dixie Cup. When I got out of the service, I wore a police hat. And now I'm proud to wear a VFW hat to an organization I love. I want to be able to give back to my country, give back to my state, give back to my comrades, and give back to the people of the United States who support veterans. And everybody does. They may not say it. People go, you know, veterans get a bad, a bad rap sometimes. And they truly do. Uh, they, they, they think you're tainted goods. Oh, you're a veteran. What does that mean? Well, look, I, don't, I, you know, I understand, I don't want to offend you. You ain't going to offend me and talk to me like I always know that everybody else. And I'm preaching to the choir here. So I hope you, want, you know, everybody here understands that. But we have to stay involved with our community. How many, and again, preach to the choir, you know what I always say? People drive by a VFW or a Veterans Hall, and I'm sure they go, a bunch of old guys sitting there drinking beer telling war stories. <laughs> right? And that, that is the stigma. They think we're a geriatric gin joint. <laughs> But understand, they, they have no idea. That's why I praise the, the VFW. Now, like I said, I know there's Legion members here. I'm sure there's DAV. They do the same things. They have programs that they work and they do to show that there's nobody sitting in the bar telling war stories. There might be a sea story told here and there for us Navy folk. <laughs> so today is Veterans Day. It is an opportunity to commemorate our contributions to the living America. The living Americans that are veterans, which is, I think, latest census ballpark 20 million. Wow. 
20 million Americans out of 310, do I have that right, about 310 million? Now my math's not the greatest, it's about 8%. 8% of Americans are serving or have served, that's it. Think about it, 8%, that's all. The other, and I, know, and I don't mean this disparaging, the other 92%, they enjoy the benefits and the freedoms like we all do of the greatest country on earth for the service that veterans have provided. So please, give yourselves a round of applause for coming down. And I'll close with this. I don't want to talk long. I know it's been a long night. I'm probably the only thing standing between you and going home watching television, drinking beer, or whatever it is you do. <laughs> if you talk to a veteran, ask them. Ask them what they've done. Ask them what they did in the service. Where did you serve? What years? They'll be happy to tell you. Now, I, I know sometimes some veterans don't talk about it, and that's okay. There'll be a time they will. I know I talked to a, a Vietnam veteran, was a good friend of mine. He said, I never wanted to talk about it. But as life went on, he did, and it gave him the closure. People don't understand that, and it gave, and it, that's what he's telling me. I mean, I'm, I'm far thing, I'm just like, I'm just a dumb cop. But that's what he said. He, gave, he goes, finally talking about it, gave him closure. So please, ask him better what he did. Where is she done? Because let's face it, 20% of the military now is made up of women. Yeah. Thank God. You know, and, and as a father of a female Marine, oh. I, if I would have went around saying that, I would have got my ass ripped. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Semper Fi. You're so silly to have a reason that's Semper Fi. <laughs> oh, now you're a Marine, Mister? I thought you were going to want me. He was Marine first. Marine first. Then you went the Army. Yeah, he got smart. Yeah, he got smart. No. <laughs> did you get him over having a pan or something? How did that happen? Holy crap. You were in the Marines then, buddy. Now look, for your Marines, I'm with you. Like, I don't know how I want Marines in Army. <laughs> I don't know. Look, I was in the Navy. We do all the fighting. Everybody else just helps. <laughs> Thank you, City of Vallejo. Thank you to the VFW post here. So much. I had a wonderful time here. And it is great to be here within the, and seeing what the community is all about. I look forward to coming back with your wife. With my, with my wife. Right. I'll come back with my wife, I promise. And I understand there's a Messiah community here yes. within the Filipino yes. community. Yes. She'll love it. Yes. That way she don't have to speak to God. <laughs> so, mate, again, I, I can't thank you enough how humble I am. Uh, so, in closing, may God bless all of you. May God bless our troops serving abroad and at home. May God always bless the United States of America. Thank you so much and take care. to make a special announcement. The quartermaster has announced that there is steaks that are available. We have 25 steaks that are left over. These are the steaks that you ate. And uh, they're left over, they're cooked. But wait, there's more. There's more. And they can go in a, uh, we have the boxes for them to go into. I think they belong to the bedroom hall now. Give me $10 each. <laughs> That's what we were going to try to raise, $10 each on it. So, any of you are interested in steaks, see our quartermaster back here. 
AC on a stakeholder. <laughs> there was a discussion at one time that we had had, we bought 250 stakes because Nestor said we're going to have 250 people. So I don't know whatever happened to the other, would that be 70 for the rest? So anyway, steaks are ready, they're cooked. How did everybody enjoy your steak tonight? What a wonderful, wonderful flavor. Okay, one other reason I came up here was to recognize our visitor from Kansas City, Dwayne Saramento, and to present to him a, ma a lasting memory from the city of Vallejo, from the VFW Post 1123 and our auxiliary. And I want to uh, present this from him, for him. Come on up, Dwayne. Yes, sir. He's over there. <laughs> this is a box. This is a secret box. <laughs> I want you to look at this box and to think about what is in this box. You iPods? You have iPods? His wife is from Cebu, and during the Vietnam War, I was in Cebu quite a few times on aeroplanes, and we flew missions out of Cebu at Mac Tan Air Force Base. Yes. So it's all closed it's now. Mactan Airport is open. Is it? Well, they turned it into an airport. International, International airport. airport. And it is the most beautiful place in the world. I'll tell you, you can go to a lot of places in the world. The, the sand is so white and it's beautiful. Anyway, back to this. Who cares? <laughs> what Post 1123 would like to do is present a watch, a lasting watch for you. Wow. And this watch uh, has special meaning. It's engraved inside there with your name and Post 1123 on the back of the watch. So on behalf of Post 1123, I present you a beautiful watch for you to wear and remember us. Thank you. 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 Thank I always remember this post and this city without a doubt. Now, Rosanna, I'm definitely coming back. <laughs> I got 200 witnesses. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 
We will now have our benediction from our post chaplain, 1123, Steve Bennett. Why men who have been to war yearn to reunite? I now know why men who have been to war yearn to reunite. Not to tell stories or look at old pictures. Not to weep or to laugh. Comrades gather because they long to be with the people who once acted their best, who once suffered and sacrificed, who were stripped of their humanity. I did not pick these men. They were delivered by fate and the military. But I now know them in a way that I know no other men. I have never given anyone such trust. They were willing to guard something more precious than my life. They would have carried my reputation, the memory of me. It was part of the bargain we all made. The reason we are willing to die for one another. As long as I have memory, I will think of them every day. I am sure that when I leave this world, my last thoughts will be of my family and my comrades, such good men. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. 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 Cover. Maybe see it. And finally, for our closing remarks, I'd like to bring up our past district commander and post commander of 1123, Bill Reed. Thank you. I'm going to have to save the Air Force's reputation by not assist having any assistance. <laughs> I had dinner with Duane uh, last night, and it was an honor. Uh, like some, uh, some of you do know, uh, my wife is from Cebu. So uh, Duane came in today and ran me down and said, You did not tell me your wife is from Cebu. <laughs> I said, Well, you didn't ask, but anyway. <laughs> But anyway, it, it was an honor. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for everything you've done. Roger, you as well. Uh, I'd like to thank the auxiliary, uh, who I had the pleasure of working with with my time as the district commander. I also want to thank my comrades and, and other veterans that are out here today. That's not a bomb threat. <laughs> no more going to the tables. <laughs> So if anyone sees a brown Chevy, Tahoe, <laughs> California plates, there's some detail on your phone about it. Oh, yeah, I got it. Okay, first I'd like to thank you all for joining us today to commemorate the service of veterans. I was given this task by Reggie and I had to think about what to say. So I borrowed these words. On Veterans Day, we acknowledge humbly that we can never serve our veterans enough in, or in quite the same way that they have served us. But we can try. We can practice kindness. We can pay it forward. We can volunteer. We can serve. We can respect one another. We can always have each other's back. That is, what veteran, that is what Veterans Day asks from all of us and gives us something to think about. I wish all of you, I wish all of you a very thoughtful and happy Veterans Day as we celebrate with our family, friends, and comrades. Thank you all for being here. Couldn't have been said better. Thank you, Bill.